Another dead end. And quite literally. It's not as if there are any ancients living we could go and ask. Not alive as such, but not quite dead. Wait, what? Elidibus. Wait, what? <gasps> Is he in the fucking crystal? The crystal tower? We might be able to speak with him there. You kind of neglected to mention this rather important element. But I'll forgive you, because you're cute. Well, too bad you can't come back with me, but uh, just give me the keys, okay? Take this guy, this is my spirit vessel. Oh, <laughs> literally giving me the keys. I'll lock up before I leave. Empty now, of course, but it should allow you to operate the tower systems in the umbilicus. If even the smallest fragment of Elidibus' essence remains, it should be possible to locate it. But the question is, will he help us? As for access to the umbilicus, pray seek out Lena for assistance. Chances are she still stands watch at the ascensor gate. Should she or anyone else ask for me, tell them... I am living my life to the fullest, that I am happy, hardships and all. You got it. Well, we best be on our respective ways. God's willing, we will see each other er again ere long. Well, back to the Crystarium. It's funny, I always actually wondered if Elidibus was really dead, because I distinctly remember thinking it was odd that you could see his little light go into the Crystal Tower. But uh, now I know it's just Ishikawa planning for the future again, like she always does. Clever writer. Gaddis, you've returned! I was here just the other day, actually. Have you been well? You and the others? Uh, <laughs> as well as can be. We've no shortage of troubles, but we're well enough. I think this is more accurate. Then things are much the same for you as they are here. My lord is doubtless enjoying himself. Well, I mean, we do have an apocalypse on our hands. He... he said this to you? These exact words? Oh, to know that he is happy, it fills my heart with joy. Thank you, Goddess, for taking care of him. When next you see him, please tell him not to overexert himself. Futile a request, though it is. and tell him that all is well here. The peace you gifted us continues, and we work hard to build new lives for ourselves. In the course of this, we occasionally bicker, but we've never been more optimistic for the morrow. Oh my god. So we have to save the source now. We can't let these guys die after they finally got their shit together, and they're happy. And there's no more light, you know, blinding the sky. If I had one, men uh, if I had to mention one dilemma, it would be the question of our governance. Even as we speak, debate rages on over how we should run the city in the Exarch's absence. Yeah, that's a problem. Most are of a mind that the Settlement Council should continue to oversee the general running of the Crystarium, while representatives are elected to determine policy and handle diplomacy. Thus far, nothing is set in stone, but however we choose to proceed, we will not replace our lord. No one could. Uh, speaking of that tower, I need to get in. Have we recently observed any unusual phenomena? No, I cannot say that we have. Curious that you should ask me this question, though. What? Some days ago- why did the music just stop? Holy shit! Some days ago, Reem came and asked the very same. 
What? She was rather unsettled, in stark contrast to how cheerful she has been of, as of late. Does she just have, like, force sensitivity? Like, she knows something's wrong? She and other Kristarium youths just hosted a festival, you see. Oh, was that the one that Gaia was invited to? It proves so popular that there's already plans for another celebration, one much bigger than the first. Between her preparations for the festival and the restoration of the empty, she struck me as happy and full of life. She's got a girlfriend. So when I saw her in a state of such worry, I couldn't help but feel worried in turn, especially since she wouldn't tell me what troubled her. I dare say she would be more willing to confide in you. May I ask you to broach the subject with her? Wait, so she, they mentioned the empty. Did this require people to finish Eden? I mean, I did all of it, but I don't remember it being a requirement. You wish to enter the umbilicus? Very well. I shall fetch the key at once and take the opportunity to find Reen. Please wait for me in the city, in front of the Cabinet of Curiosity. Shall I, shall we say? I'll be along as soon as I can. I mean, I have the key thing, right? Do I need both? A physical key and the little crystal thing? Why are we waiting here? Shouldn't I just be at the tower? Oh god. What is this? Following event cannot be skipped. You may wish to cancel any pending duty finder registrations. So this is something big coming up. Oh, okay. Now I'm nervous. <laughs> Please don't mess up the first. I really like it. Do my old eyes deceive? Is that truly Gaddis? Old eyes. Oh! Hey guys! Ha, it is! Full glad am I to see you hale and whole, my friend. What a wonderful surprise it is to have you back with us, and at this most opportune time. Most opportune? In case you haven't heard, we're planning to produce a tome chronicling events from the Flood to the Knight's Return. Yeah, actually, nobody told me this. For this project, we intend to draw upon records kept by the world's people. Historical and contemporary first-hand accounts will be the centerpiece of the tome, but yours will be the one to crown them all. I've been asked to contribute a chapter on the soul, a subject that is key to understanding much of your endeavors. In the course of developing the spirit vessel, I gained valuable insights into travel beyond the rift. Knowledge that will allow me to attest to your existence and deeds. Thumbs up. There's just no end to the questions I would ask you, but if you can indulge me just for one for now. In your quest to restore the night, you faced a many a formidable foe. Among them, who offered you the greatest struggle? Oh boy. Titania, driven mad by light and loneliness? No. Uh, Vothri, in his misguided self-righteousness? Not really. Hades, who bore the burden of his people? Wait, this may come as a surprise, but... What does this mean? I was gonna say Hades, but what does this last one mean? I kinda wanna see? Truly, I never would have guessed. But then if I could, I suppose I wouldn't have had to ask. Wait, did I just say something off screen? This is a tremendously eye-opening answer. And we will see that your account of this battle features prominently in the tome. Wait, so now I don't know what my character picked? God damn it. I know you'd love to talk his ear off, Morin, but we really should be on our way. Those documents from Yulmor won't collect themselves. Of course, of course. And afterwards, would you care to join me for tea? I was hoping you might clarify a few points in your treatise. Till next time, then. Do tell the others to look after themselves. Our overzealous friend, in particular, remind him not to overexert himself. Again and again, till his ears fall off, if that's what it takes for him to take to heart. His little flicky ears. Bye-bye.
Was that just a fun little moment? Are there more people going to nostalgia trip with me? Oh, maybe not. Oh, is that the warrior of darkness? Yes, it is. Oh, the kids. It's the little cat kid. It's him. It's really him. What are you doing here? Um, secret mission? If you're going to battle, I can give you some medicine. I made it myself. Made out of grass or grapes or whatever you guys did last time. Best not, Riki. You'd only give him a stomachache. We've come to see Morin to get his advice. One, uh, one of the guard finally agreed to teach us how to fight. But first, we need to choose a fighting, sti choose a fighting style. While I, know what I, uh, while I know I want to be a mage, Arkel isn't sure. Magic isn't really my thing, so I was thinking of taking up the axe. Or the sword. Or maybe the bow. Well, you look like a tiny Arbert, so any one of those would be fine. They all seem about right, but it's hard to decide. So I thought I'd ask Morin. He knows a lot of... Uh, he knows about a lot of things. Uh-uh. He isn't here? Aw. Ooh, ooh. Why don't you... Ooh, ooh. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Why don't you have the Warrior of Darkness choose for you? Oh, no. What do you think suits Arkel best? Axe, sword, or bow? Hmm. For smiting your opponent, the axe. For protecting your friends, the sword. For fighting and hunting both the bow. Hmm. Well, you're a kid, and I, I don't want you get, getting up close and personal with monsters, so maybe the bow is the best bet. The bow. If you took up the bow, you could be just like... Renda Ray, the Warrior of Light. Oh, the one that I don't like. <laughs> She's like the only one of those that I didn't like the roll quest for. I love that tale. Let's borrow the book today. It's really popular, though. I hope it's still there. Thanks for helping me decide, Warrior of Darkness. I'll start with that style and maybe try something else later on. Yeah, when I find out that I don't like it. And when I get really strong, I hope to have a bout with you. Uh, sure. Bye. Don't do drugs. Drink your milk. All that stuff. Humph, such fun he's been having basking in the adoration of musty old bookworms and wide-eyed younglings. But does he spare a thought for me? Of course not. Oh no. Is this Feoul? I'm sorry. Don't be mad, please. I waited and- oh no, this is- this is definitely them. I waited and waited and waited, but he won't so much as acknowledge the presence of his beautiful branch, even though they're right here. Such a heartless thing our sapling is. Cold and cruel and heartless. Oh. Wait, I don't know. I'm not gonna say I need you. Oh, faithful Feoul, loveliest of branches, how I have missed you. I think this is the correct choice. If you truly missed me, you should have cried for me at the top of your lungs the instant you have, you arrived. Yeah, you know, I really should have learned actually by now. To make up for it, you will call with twice the passion next time. Though for there to be a next time, you have some few struggles to overcome. So, my adorable sapling, the world is on the verge of destruction, is it? Uh? Oh yeah, I guess they can go between worlds, so maybe they would already know this stuff. Yeah, what? <laughs> Just surprised. <laughs> How do I know this? Joined as we are, spying on you is as simple as sliding down the back of a rainbow. Would that I could aid you in your quest, but the fate of we Fey folk is bound to that of this star. Whither it goes, so too do we follow. Such is our way. So you couldn't escape if you tried, or if you wanted to. The most I could do for you is spare you the pain by gifting you the sweetest of eternal dreams. No, please don't kill me. I don't need that. But if escape's not to your liking, then you must struggle with your fellow mortals. Mm-hmm. 
Ah, but there, but here are the ones you're waiting for. I wonder what manner of conclusion awaits at tail's end. Bye bye. There you guys are. My apologies for the delay. Goddess, it's so wonderful to see you again. Can I give you guys a hug? You doubtless have much catching up to do, so I shall leave you to it. I've taken the liberty of unlocking the umbilicus, and you may enter at your leisure. Oh, so maybe Reen could come with us then? Thanks, Lena. Oh god, there's a lot of people. I'm relieved to hear that everyone is well. I've had this feeling, like a pit in my stomach, and I was afraid that something might have happened. Mm, well, something kind of did. Maybe I'm overthinking things, but it's just that... I'm the Oracle of Light, but I've never spoken with Heidelin, never once heard her call. Even so, I've always had this feeling deep inside me, a connection to something immense. These past few days, though, that connection has wavered, as if that immense something was distant, then close, then distant again. And then, the other night, I was jolted awake by the feeling it had been completely severed. Oh shit, that's when we probably killed Zodiac, right? Wanting some fresh air, I went to open the window, and to my horror, the sky was ablaze, like during the star shower. It's a vision? Like mine? But then I blinked and everything was normal. Yeah, just like mine. The next day, no one said a thing. No one else had seen what I'd seen. As far as I could tell, nothing was out of the ordinary. I began to wonder if it was a figment of a half-remembered dream. Well, Gaddis, what are you not telling me? I have to know, please. It doesn't matter how terrible it is. All right. It wasn't my imagination then. The doom we witnessed in Amarot has come again. I can't believe it. Like I told you before, all is well here in the first. So don't worry about us, please. Look only to the threat before you. We're fine right now, and even if we weren't, we've learned how to survive. Should the final days reach us here as well, you may be assured we won't go quietly. I mean, you guys have been fighting for a long time. No. We'll hold on until you can find a way to save all our worlds. So long as you continue your fight, so too will we, united in purpose beneath a blazing sky. You're a good kid. Hope upon a flower. Oh, let's see Elidibus. You're headed to the Umbilicus to consult with Elidibus, right? I'll do some consulting on my own and speak with Lena, decide how we might best prepare for the final days. So it's farewell for now, but we'll see each other again. I'm certain of it. We live through the flood and the tyranny of the Light Wardens. We're survivors. Do what you need to do, and know that we will too. You got it, kid.
Ah, uh, memories. It feels like forever ago, but it hasn't... Oh, <laughs> Gaddis's memories too. It hasn't been that long, really. Oh. It's like he's being haunted by good memories. That's an ominous sound. Biometric authentication complete. Please state your business. Um... I want to talk to a spirit in the tower? Is that even a thing to ask? Acknowledged. Reinitializing Sitka's tower systems. Searching for Elidibus entity. Wait, what? Just like that? It's like a Google? Crystal Tower Google? Target located in subterranean core power accumulator. Oh shit. Projecting image. He's probably not going to be really happy, right? Oh, well, I guess he did go back to normal before he poofed. Oh, he's the little kid version. My home. My friends. No more than a dream. Oh, this is going to make me feel bad again. <laughs> Hey, Elidibus. <sighs> you. Why have you awakened me? I no longer sense those places beyond. Or Lord Zodiac. You must explain all. Well, it's all Fan Daniel's fault, really. So, he has fallen, and my brethren's souls returned to the star. The doom we sacrificed so much to prevent is come again. Old burdens, now yours to bear. But if this is Van Daniel's design, then I, as Elidibus, have a duty to fulfill. Your unsolicited act has restored to me some few memories of the Convocation. Oh? Such knowledge as I have, I will share. Okay. I am sorry. Despite all the stuff that's happened, I... I am... sorry. Why apologize for receiving a favor of the defeated? If it sits ill, consider it payment for freeing Lord Zodiac from servitude. Where to begin? Ah, the end. Your understanding of what caused the final days is consistent with our own. The decay first took root where the currents were weakest. Yes, a conclusion drawn by him, Fan Daniel. Not the him of here and now, but as I knew him, long long ago. Having shed light upon the phenomenon, he dedicated himself to devising a countermeasure. Were it not for his knowledge of the Celestial, we would never have made the connection, and thence forestalled the final days. So non-Amon Fandaniel was actually helpful. 
And though he inherited that noble soul, how different this last incarnation, so consumed by self-loathing and hate. Alpis. Yes, the name is familiar to me. Yet I know it not as a flower, but a place. Oh. A testing facility for determining which of our creations were fit to be released into the world. Many worked there. And before joining the convocation and assuming the title of Fan Daniel, he was their chief. Interesting. He was Hermes. Hermes? So he ran really fast? That is all I know. That was his seat's name, I guess? The crystals tell little of the lives the Fourteen led prior to their induction. Elpis itself would tell even less. Nary a ruin has survived. What? Oh no. Wait. I saw you there. What? In Elpis. Azim? In Elpis, maybe? No. I did not. But I did. I did. A lingering trace of impossibility. And a truth that fills my heart. You gotta explain a little more. My memories remain clouded, I fear. However, they have revealed to me one possible course. You must travel to Elpis, to the time when Hermes served as its chief. Time travel? In glimpsing the Exarch's memories, not only did I make his summoning magic mine own, I also mastered the workings of this tower. Oh my god, are you going to send me back to the past? Which, having absorbed my empowered essence, now harbors an abundance of energy. Oh, uh, we're doing some Back to the Future shit here. As such, I believe I can deliver you unto the past. Holy shit! Unto that place and that precise moment. Oh my god, we're actually going to be able to see the ancients, like, actually there? Given the eons that must be traversed, the gateway will not be fully formed. Hmm. Your form will be less tangible still than those warriors of light I had summoned. So I'm just going to be a ghost. In all likelihood, none will be able to see or hear you. Yet even should you manage to interact with others, you will be unable to affect meaningful change. Oh, so it avoids any butterfly effects that way. For the reality you wish to save, the reality to which you must return, exists as a result of the final days. Yeah, I get it. You cannot reshape the past to undo the tragedies of the present. Cannot unmake the sorrow and suffering fated to come. Now, are you saying can't or shouldn't? Because <laughs> I'd be tempted to try. In full knowledge of this, will you still entrust your life to your foe and make the journey? I don't really have any other choice. Very well. I shall cast you unto the river of time. Let this be my final act. But then how do I come back? You must input the commands. I no longer have the authority. First, you must reconfigure the systems, 
that the tower's ether may be channeled for the magic. Do I know how to do that? <laughs> I guess my character's smarter than I am. The preparations are complete. The gateway will soon open. Return at once to the ocular. Oh, this is going to be crazy. All appears to be in order. The ether flows unimpeded. The magic should consume every last moat of my essence. Oh. Your last act. Why are you surprised? Did I not say that this will be my final act? I mean, yeah, but you always kind of hope that there's room for a miracle or two. Lord Zodiac is no more. There is nothing for me here. Oh. The ones I love and long to see again are waiting. In that promised land. Beyond memory and dream. <sighs> now go, warrior of light. Go, and do not look back. Thank you, Oedipus. Well, Hydaelyn, I take my leave of you. Yours is the mantle of the last of us. May you have the joy of it. The burden and the solitude. It falls to you now. You and your champion to save our star. Oh, God. Oh, familiar place. Am I going to fly through more memories again? Oh, they're too fast this time. Way too fast. Here we go. Can I attune to this crystal? That's the first thing I thought. Let me attune to an etherite crystal in the past. Oh shit, I really am a ghost. Oh, they have faces! What the fuck? They're like... Ella's and humans. Su super tall ones. <laughs> Guide like man. Ugh. I can't help it. I have to see if I can attune. Ugh, too tiny. The device is reminiscent of an etherite. Perhaps it's possible to attune with it? Yes? Despite attempting to channel and focus your energies, you fail to attune with the device. You can only assume it operates differently. Damn it. 
Alright, who's this guy? Can I even talk to them? Ah, they're so tall. The man stands dutifully by the Aetherite-like device, a guide for this facility in all likelihood. Hello, I'm tiny and I need help. You attempt to get the man's attention, but if he sees or hears you, he gives absolutely no indication. As the lid is warned, it appears your form is intangible. See, I need to find Asim wherever the hell they are, because I'm them, and maybe I could connect with them? Conversing woman. Yeah, they do look like Ellisons, even though they don't have the ears. Is this... Oh, this is the right place, yes? Propylion? Judging by the woman's words, this fact, this facility is called Propylion. Poke poke! You attempt to gently prod the woman to attract her attention, but feel nothing, and it seems neither does she. Okay. Everything certainly is large. The doors are huge, too. Maybe this guy? I mean, they're all black robed, but black robed man. The remarkably large man wears a black robe and a half mask, much like the phantoms you encountered in Mera Lamentorum and the recreated Amarat. It would seem you have made it to your destination. Poke poke. Hello? You gesticulate wildly and shout all manner of greeting and obscenities. <laughs> Why should we just swearing at him? But the man does not so much as glance in your general direction. Well, shit. I also can't run or do anything else. Incorporeal. Transcending the boundary between existence and nihility. Okay. You suspect this door leads outside, but how to open it? I mean, I could wait till somebody passes through. Oh! Or not. And here we are, Elpis. Wait, that's the voice of- is this that white-haired guy again? Is this me? Well, well. How rare to receive you in person. To what do we owe the honor? Yes, it's him again. Oh, just a few odd tasks. We'll be here a while. You're welcome to stay as long as you see fit, of course. As a matter of procedure, however, I must ask that you kindly remove your masks. What? Why would you take them off for this? Or is this just so we can see their faces better for the plot? Come now. Is this truly necessary? Surely you can tell who we are. <laughs> yeah, I definitely can tell who you are. Who you are, perhaps. But I am far less infamous. Regardless, if we do not follow protocol, it is our hosts who would be held accountable. So, please, do favor us with your handsome face. Ooh, now we get to see what he actually looked like. Is his hair just all white? <sighs> Let's see. <laughs> he looks like a Malfoy or something. This guy's way too pretty. <gasps> Does he see me? Satisfied? I thank you for your cooperation. You are free to go about your business. Is he going to look at me again? Oh, I better get out of the way. By the by, you see it too, yes? <gasps> what? Uh, hi?
I haven't the foggiest what you're talking about. Okay, he does know, but why is he lying? Hmm. That's odd. Oh my god! It's right here. A bit thin in the ether, but there's no mistaking it. The color of its soul is almost identical to Azem's. Oh, so this guy isn't Azem. Is this Fan Daniel then? Like the old Fan Daniel? Do you Daniel? suppose he created it? Rather unusual for a familiar to have a soul, though. Don't ask me. All I know is that it's trouble. Doubly so if it's his spitting image. Oh my god. Are they gonna make it so that Azim, like, looks like me? So let's leave it be. Come now. Hello, I can talk. Can you hear me? Hmm. It's trying to say something. But it's literally too intangible to form words. Oh god damn it. Why don't you give it some ether? <gasps> Spare a snifter of your bounteous reserves. Oh shit. Please? Who do you take me for? You guys are best friends, apparently. Why, a dear friend, of course. One who wouldn't let acts of kindness, such as my accompanying him on errands to far-flung outposts, go unrewarded? He's got some crazy eyes. I suggest you close your eyes, or this may be unpleasant. Okay. And of course, it's a snap. Oh shit, am I gonna be able to move around? You may open your eyes. Oh, damn. That ether was very effective. Wait, what? They, they made me bigger, too. Oh, you even adjusted its size. Wait, I almost wish I was a Lalafell. Would they make a Lalafell as tall as these guys? The better to indulge your whim. This way, it will be easier to communicate. How very thoughtful of you. And may I applaud your artful reinforcement. Without further ado then. <gasps> Greetings. I am Hithlidaeus, chief oh. of the Bureau of the Architect. So that's what he looks like. Oh, I feel bad that I didn't figure it out. I was like, I, I guess I never thought about what Hithlodeus' face would actually look like. Oh, that's great. I'm so happy now. Sulking beside me is the most honorable Emmett Selk of the Convocation of Fourteen. Yes, yes, we know each other. And how might we address you, my new friend? Oh, my new old friend? Fine name. And I'm pleased to see you understand our words. So tell us, whence have you come? The thinness of your essence suggests you weren't created here. Uh, am I even allowed to tell you? You do not know? Or cannot say? Hmm. Allow me to ask a different question then. What brings you here? To stop the end of days. Oh. Huh. Uh, I mean, I need both of these. But they did specifically mention Elpis, so I kind of need to know about that. Well now. The same as us. Perhaps Azim wished to come too but had to settle for a familiar. Sure, let's go with that. 
If he truly wished to be here, then he would be. Right you are. Man, fan artists are gonna have a field day with this, actually seeing their confirmed faces. I'm just thinking about that now. There's gonna be tons of fan art of these two. My apologies if we've given offense. The two of us can discern the color of souls, you see. And yours happens to resemble that of a friend. Yes, I know that. And with your purpose matching our own besides, we jumped to a hasty conclusion. We are here to speak with Hermes, the chief overseer of this facility, which we also intend to tour in order to gain greater insight into the man's work. We, I say, though this is Emmett Selk's charge. I am here only to serve as his guide. And I should be happy to serve as yours as well, by way of an apology for the misunderstanding. Wait. Are you suggesting that we bring it along on official business? This thing we know next to nothing about? <laughs> I mean, I, do they even know what an Elizan looks like? Of course not, right? Because these they didn't exist before. If you harbor suspicions, better to keep it close than leave it to its own devices. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> Besides, having a mysterious life form in tow is the norm rather than the exception here. I guess they do a lot of creation magic stuff. I should have worn a robe. Welcome, my friends, to the testing ground of creation at Heaven's Edge, Elpis. Oh, damn. That is very pretty. Feels vaguely familiar. Oh, those dogs! Wait, that's, uh... Oh, there she is. This presence. But see, that's got to be the knot. Oh, as Lottles! Hermes! Visitors! We have visitors! What the hell? It has, like, wing ears? Oh, I want one. Can I have one? Take it back to the future with me? What secrets are you hiding, I wonder? Man, you are not liking me at all. <laughs> or maybe you have your own suspicions. This is clearly before final days though, so... At least I don't have to worry about things crashing and burning around me while I try to get information. This is hardly my first time here, but the scenery never fails to take my breath away. Why, it feels as if you could just reach out and touch the heavens. Now, if the Loperits had made this as their inside forest, that would have been very impressive. Instead of that, like, weird crystal tree forest thing that they tried to make. Now then, to begin our guided tour. Perhaps you already know these things, but for the sake of thoroughness, I shall start with the basics. Using concepts to give shape to ether, creation magics allow us to bring forth anything we desire, be it inanimate objects or living beings. Anyone may conceive of concepts, but they must all undergo evaluation at the Bureau of the Architect. As part of that process, living beings and certain arcane entities may be sent here to Elpis for an in-depth ob observation and study. Ha <laughs> ha! A fascinating facility, isn't it? I dare say you will enjoy touring it with us. Can I go back and attune now? Oh, god damn it, it won't let me do it. Wait, exit the ocular? I'm assuming that would be bad. Well, it kind of breaks the illusion when you see other people here. 
Oh, a gift? Now then, our friend Hermes. Aside from overseeing the facility, he also conducts his own research. Chances are he will be at the main observation hub, so let us seek him out uh, first. Attired as you are, however, you stand out a little bit too much. Our dear Emmett Silk wishes to keep a low profile for his errand, so... Do you know how to make a robe? The basic concept will do. Uh... I mean, I, I'm a weaver, but they're probably not going to let me do that here. No, in that case, uh, Emmett Selk. No. Your whim, your responsibility. You're getting not another thimble of ether out of me. Ah, <sighs> The way he scrimps sometimes. You think he wasn't a nigh-bottomless font of magic? Very well. I shall make the robe, but perhaps you could assist. Come, let us search for the requisite material. Yes, these creatures should suffice. An etheric rope. I want you to use it to capture, shall we say, two Pedaludi. There are three species here, I believe. Any two uh, different kinds should serve. Now, I should mention that the strength of the rope is tied, no pun intended, to the strength of its user. As your ether is still thin compared to ours, you'll need to weaken the pedal of eye first. Good luck. Okay. Come over here. No, no. God damn it. You've caught the Petaludi? Come, come, let's see. Here you go. Yes, these fine fellows will do nicely. And now for a spot of reversion. There, it's ready. It's nothing fancy, but then we're trying not to stand out. Try it on for size. You turn living beings into clothing just like that? Won't someone be angry with us for using those creatures? Yeah, maybe this one, because we already know they could do creation magics. It's fine. There's no one around to tell us off. And besides, we can always make more Pedalui. They only need a tiny amount of ether. It may take some effort to get the form and composition right, but anyone familiar with the concept should be able to manage. Well and good to disguise and educate it, but it won't fool anyone who can see worth a damn. Fair point, but at the very least it should spare you unwanted attention from casual observers. <laughs> Emmett Selk speaks true. Even dressed like us, your unusual nature will be plain to those who think to look. Should someone question your presence, don't make up excuses, much less try to explain what you actually are. No. Best to simply say you're a familiar. The question is whose? Well, I mean, Azim's, obviously, because... I mean, I am Azim... Ah, of course, Ozems. If you belong to him, people will give you the benefit of the doubt for any and all outlandish behavior. <laughs> See, his, uh, his reputation precedes him. Exploiting our associate's absence? For lack of his presence, absolutely. Were he here, he'd have been the first to propose the idea, and you know it. <laughs> I like these guys. With that, your story is settled. Let us continue with our errand. It's funny how Emmett Selk was such a grumpy pants, like, even in his original state.
Ithlodeus is ready to continue if you are. Okay, let me change my outfit first. All right, much better. If you are ready, let us continue along the path to Anagrasis. The place serves as an observation hub and residence both. Someone there should be able to point us in the direction of Hermes. Wait, is there... are there aether currents here? Oh, god damn it. There are. Yes? Can I help you? We wish to speak with Chief Hermes. Do you know where we might find him? Well now, by your mask I assume you are one of the fourteen. I wasn't aware there, were to be, there was to be a visitation. Between you and us, it's something of a surprise. Your discretion in the matter would be appreciated. I see, I see. My lips are sealed. The chief should be out conducting observations as usual. His focus of late has been aquatic creatures, so I expect you'll find him at one of the pools here. The pools, you say? Many thanks and apologies for disrupting your work. I say, Hithlodeus, well, I've never met Hermes. You know him well, do you not? That being the case, couldn't you simply find him by his ether? Aye, that I could. As you know, Emmett Selk and I can, can discern the color of souls. By the same token, we can also see ether quite keenly and from great distances. With this skill, I could readily locate Hermes, but I felt that it would be a waste of an opportunity. We're here to perform an assessment, after all. By searching the ordinary way, we stand to gain insight into Elpis and the man in charge of it. This is as much for your own enjoyment like as not, but point taken. If you're going to accompany us, make yourself useful and help us look for Hermes. According to his profile, he has short, dark hair. So you know, it's because we're in Elpis that we don't have our own cowls up. A special exemption due to the need to be aware of dangerous creatures. Elsewhere, we do not exhibit our individuality. It's unseemly. This is all common sense, but I would not assume you possess any. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> you little snarky asshole. <laughs> it's a rare treat indeed to be able to search for someone by their appearance, and I thank you for humoring me. Come, let's find our man. familiar of myself. Oh! What the uh, hell is that? Different! You're different too! Be-winged girl? You and me! We're alike! Friends! I want to be... Wait! Please! Wait! Greetings and salutations. Can you hear me? Do not be alarmed. I mean you no harm. I wish only to hear your words, share your feelings, and know your thoughts. May we please be friends? <laughs> May we please be friends? You're kind of creepy. I know you're supposed to be cute, but... <laughs> ah! I see you found him. It's Ladeus. It's been a while. Too long, I think. 
Oh, that's the same voice actor for that newer Fan Daniel, for sure. Too long indeed for close collaborators. On this blessed occasion, I bring not only myself, but others who long to speak with you. You are of the convocation. Oh, he's got an Ellison mouth. <laughs> I could tell. <laughs> That's funny. Like, evil Ellison guy. Emmett Selk at your service. Do I have the honor of addressing Hermes, chief overseer of Elpis? You do. You have traveled far for it. Given your facility's purpose, its remote location is something of a necessity. Would that I didn't have to rely upon a guide. Oh, you wound me. Have I not ever been an attentive and helpful friend? <laughs> but moving along to more agreeable company, this one we chance to... Okay, bird girl. Well, you certainly have her attention. Is she one of yours, Hermes? Her name is Meteon. It means shooting star. Hmm. If I may make an observation, her ether is terribly thin. I fear she might dissipate at any moment. Nor do I believe you've made a submission to the Bureau. I would remember such a concept if you had. I haven't, as you say. I judged it too early. She's a pet project of mine, still undergoing preliminary testing. That's kind of weird. <laughs> but I guess to them it's not that strange of a concept. But rest assured that I will attend in person ere long. Very well. Being an authority on flying life forms, I appreciate that you are exacting in your work. I shall look forward to your submission. If we have finished with the perfunctory chit chat, I would discuss official matters. By my coming, I trust you already anticipate the subject. I have an inkling, yes. Please wait to the main building yonder. I shall join you as soon as I've returned these creatures to their homes. What's wrong, Hermes? The Namastoma is missing. Oh, well, that's what those things are? <laughs> that's what they're called here? Hmm. I may have found it. A creature with the self-same ether as those there, nestled in the boughs of a tree outside the grounds. You're saying they can climb with their sorry excuses for limbs? <laughs> <laughs> the fashion has been to imbue aquatic creatures with the power of flight. Ever since the words of Mitron created a sky swimming fish. Oh my god, can I have a little Azlatl minion that flies around with me? The Ambistomas too can fly, if only slightly. And they could conceivably climb a tree. Whether they can come down safely, however. Excuse me. supposed to do with this lot? <laughs> May I suggest we split up? If you would be so good as to assist Hermes, Emmett Selk and I shall keep an eye on these adorable creations in the meantime.
The tenet of the words of Mitron is to create aquatic life both unique and beneficial. Aquatic. What would possess them to put this creature in the sky? And is it even aquatic to begin with? The Ambistoma was submitted to the Bureau not long ago, and I'm pleased to see it's found its way here. We'll make sure these little ones don't wander off like their adventurous fellow. Go on and lend Hermes a hand. It seems Hermes and Mateon have found their quarry, a creature known in this age as an Ambistoma. Yet though it has been safely extricated from the tree, Hermes appears to have found himself in quite the predicament. The Ambistoma. Hermes saw it high up in the tree. He climbed it to get it, but it jumped on him and he slipped. Do you need a hand? No, no, I'm fine, if a little embarrassed. Now, for your own safety, please stand back. This falls down. Oh, God. <laughs> Ugh. Hermes, are you all right? Quite all right, yes. My apologies for making you worry, Mateon. Both you and, uh... Goddess Ramfar, you're called. An intriguing name. Somehow reminiscent of a new creation. Thank you for coming after me. As for you, little one, you must be more careful. <laughs> Wiggle. You may be able to fly, but it doesn't mean you cannot fall and hurt yourself. Oh, oh no, I forgot about its fellows! Uh, they're watching after them over there, it's fine. Truly, what a relief. I must thank Emmett Selk and Hythlodeus when I return to them. But first, with the distractions out of the way. As Chief Overseer of Elpis, permit me to welcome you to our facility. I hope you'll enjoy your time here. Well, we mustn't keep the others waiting. Let us return to Agnorosis. Ag Anag Anagnorosis. What is that word? My apologies for the trouble. Owing to your kind assistance, all the Abistomas are safe and well. I will presently send them back to their space if you are going ahead to the main building. Upon entering, you will see a table and chairs, a meeting area. We may speak there. Very well. Take care not to let the, the creatures slip away again. This appears to be the place. And here is where we part ways. We will be discussing highly sensitive affairs. Only a select few may be privy to such knowledge, and that does not include someone who cannot or will not divulge their origins. So uptight. What? Will I have to remove you by force? I have important things to say to him as well. There are reasons I cannot speak freely. Let's hear them then, these reasons of yours. Who knows? If I deem your mysterious cause worthy, I may even be inclined to offer my assistance. Oh boy, that sounds familiar. 
I do not object to his attendance. Hermes, this is highly irregular. Perhaps, but I believe he can be trusted. Meteon would not have taken to him so quickly otherwise. Moreover, the presence of a third party may help me to maintain composure. <sighs> As you wish, then. Behave yourself, do you hear? <laughs> Maybe. So, it's finally happened, then. Aye. Van Daniel has declared his intention to step down, and named you as his preferred successor. Wait, so what... Why would you need to step down if they live for an age, and... Does he just not want to do that job anymore? Also, will they ever say what that good... I guess we just never know who what the other Van Daniel's previous name was? In recognition of your knowledge and your works, the Convocation is giving the recommendation due consideration. As one who does not know you personally, I am to use my impartial eye to take your measure. And above all else, to ascertain your disposition towards the invitation. I understand that you and Van Daniel are close. He himself was once chief overseer of Elpis, after all. I should not be surprised if you knew before anyone else that he wished to relinquish his office. But why? Why would he want to do that? I did. He told me that when he fulfilled his purpose, he wished to pass the torch to me. A torch you seem none too pleased to accept. Are you so averse to serving on the Convocation? No, it's not that. For a humble researcher like myself to even be considered is an honor beyond words. No. What troubles me, what I struggle to come to terms with, is the very fact that Van Daniel is stepping down. Does this not mean that he will return to the Star? Of his own volition, yes, like so many others have before him. Wait, Return of the Star, like, die? His essence? Return to the Star? <laughs> oh my god. Does that mean die? Am I, am I this bird, girl? <laughs> I feel stupid that I asked the same question as soon as she did. Well now, that's not a word I hear often. Is that what you say here in Elpis? Mankind is the life of a Theris. Each of us, a drop of blood flowing through its veins, bearing sustenance. In our finite time upon it, tis our duty to make it a better place. That all who call it home, now and in future, may abide in happiness. To that end, we have dedicated ourselves to the pursuit of enlightened creation. And by our efforts did we transform this once untamed wilderness into the peaceful paradise you enjoy today. To return to the star whence we came is a privilege afforded to we who have so loved and nurtured it. A choice embraced by those who have lived their lives to the fullest in service to our world. And when they depart upon this journey, it is beautiful, always. The Fourteen are no exception. Tis believed no occasion is more felicitous than the fulfillment of one's duty. Our office becomes our lives, and to retire is to return, or so the majority of us hold. 
Some few have elected to eschew custom. Mayhap you feel Van Daniel's deeds do not warrant his return. Yet you should know his accomplishments as well as any. During his time, he conceived of countless outstanding concepts. And channeling the wealth of experience he attained here in Elvis, he brought forth many new specimens. I know of all this. I do. It's just... I cannot fathom why someone so great and wise, who could still do so much good, would want to end it all. I've made her upset. Forgive me. I know I requested your presence. Might I trouble you to take me to an outside? A change of scenery would do her good. Maybe she's thinking about her own mortality. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't want, didn't mean uh, a walk. Perhaps we can go for a walk. Hermes gets sad when he thinks about death. When others are sad, I'm sad too. That's how I am. How he made me. But don't worry. I'm fine now. So, why did you come here? You want to learn about Elphus and Hermes? Ooh, ooh, teach you. I can teach you. We can take turns. I, I tell you something, and you tell me something. <sighs> sure, why not? Then it's settled. Um, where to start? Ah, yes! Let's talk to Memnon. He should be near the Aetherite. I'm not good at explaining, but Memnon is. So I'll have him explain instead. And what have we here? Though you look like a person, your Aether is quite thin. I assume you're a familiar like Metion. Is there something you need? This is Gaddis. Could you teach him about Elpis? Ah, newly arrived familiar, is he? Very well. I should be glad to introduce our fair facility to him. As you know, it is mankind's duty to make the star a better place. As part of this duty, we employ creation magics to bring forth new life. However, we cannot simply release our works into the world, for it would lead to chaos. No. Any and all life forms must undergo extensive testing to determine their fitness to exist. Testing which is conducted here in Elpis. Every candidate is subject to rigorous study, in which we identify their properties, surmise what habitats might be suitable, and speculate as to the effects they may have on the environment and other species. Should it be judged beneficial addition to the star, it will be allowed to take its place in the world. The two of you too were created with the hope of making the star a better place, so heed your master's will and be good, do you hear? We will, Memnon, we will. Thanks for the lesson. You had a turn, now I get a turn. Where did you come from? Um. From a place facing a great threat. Is there such a place? I had no idea. But this place is important to you. I, I can feel it. Oh, my power. I haven't told you about it. A creation. Let's find a creation. One not being watched. Then I'll explain my power. Oh, 
Oh, they had two bills here too. Oh, this creation is perfect. But I don't remember seeing it before. Perhaps it's new? Anyway, I'll try reading its mind. That's my power. <laughs> Probably not gonna say anything. on. Hmm, I can't read it. Or maybe there's nothing to read? Wait, please wait. I'll try again. W with you this time. Okay. Uh-oh. This could be bad. Greetings. Can you hear me? This is my power. I can read the emotions of those around me and project my emotions to others in return. I'm not actually speaking to you in your mind. Rather, you are converting my emotions into words and intention, a process performed subconsciously by intelligent life forms. This ability is vital to my mission, for it allows me to interact with intelligent beings even should they communicate via unknown languages or other nonverbal means. As a consequence, I am clumsy at speaking. Yet though I struggle to express myself in this fashion, Hermes wants me to speak as much as possible, for everyone has thoughts and feelings that they may wish to hide. I harbor an affection for you, one that is difficult to define. Aside from the fact that you share common traits with us, your thoughts are complex, prismatic. They draw me in and leave me wanting to know more. Out of respect for your privacy, I'll refrain from using my power when speaking with you. Nevertheless, I want you to know that I wish to be at your I wish to be your friend. Did you hear me? <laughs> good. Now it's my turn again. So what are you good at? Oh. <laughs> Playing, gathering. Crafting, fighting, it's a secret. Hmm. I'm not really good at crafting or gathering. I don't want to scare her by saying I'm good at fighting. I don't know if Gaddis actually does a lot of playing. Let's say it's a secret. <laughs> no, shush, shush. <laughs> oh, a secret. That's something you want to hide. Just leave it to me. There, I blocked it out. I can't block everything. Not strong feelings, but that wasn't too strong. Oh, this is a creepy bird. I think we might be bothering it. <laughs> Intense stare. Well, let's keep going. We'll go and see Uthane. Uanth, Uanth, next. She's usually in a small building, one on the west row. Well, well, if, is it, if it isn't Meteon, I see you brought a friend today. Greetings, Uanth. Um, an apple. Could you make me an apple? The kind Hermes likes? Covered in syrup. I want to share it with Gaddis. Oh, candied apple. Hermes is certainly partial to them, but you know you can't eat, Metion. You weren't made to do so. But I like it too. It may seem that way, but it's due to your ability to share others' feelings. You've taken Hermes' likes for your own. In any case, I can't prepare an apple right now, but I'll bring one for Hermes soon, I promise. I'm sorry, Gaddis. I wanted to show you my favorite thing. Then I could ask about yours, but I failed. Tell her what you like. I'm not going to be a jerk and say nothing. I'll tell you what I like. Oh, so that's what you like. Yes. 
yes, I can feel it, your joy and happiness. And it makes me happy too. Thanks for sharing it with me, Gaddis. Well, we've walked and talked a lot. Maybe Hermes has finished talking too? Shall we go and see? There you are. I can see the fresh air has done Meteon good. Gaddis wanted to learn about you and Elpis, so I taught him. About this place, about my power, about your favorite food. I'm not sure if that last one will be of any use. But I do appreciate you keeping Meteon company. While you're away, I finished speaking with our guests. Finished? Hardly. You requested time to consider the invitation, so we have no choice but to occupy ourselves with an inspection of your work. My apologies. It has been decided that Emmet Selk and Hythlodeus will accompany me as I tend to my duties. If you wish to learn more, perhaps you'd like to come too? I'm compelled to remind you that he is in no way associated with the Convocation. We simply chanced to meet at Propylaeon. There's no guarantee that the matters we discuss will remain private. I do not mind. To see the joy his presence brings me, Tion, I cannot imagine our mysterious friend harbors malicious intent. Gaddis is kind, really, truly. He taught me as much as I taught him. You're coming, of course, to watch Hermes. You're bound to learn lots and lots. <laughs> 